So I was watching Vox's A24 video and I was thinking to myself, how exactly did they make this staggering nudge animation? Well, the answer is, I don't know, but I'm gonna attempt to recreate it in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. All right, let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna do is grab our images. I've got a couple of images already chosen out here. I'm gonna use the Amy poster, the X Machina. And I'm gonna use the room poster. And let's merge all of it. Let's see our images on the screen. So I'm gonna get a background node. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna merge this on the background. I'll merge that. And I'll put this on top of that. And let's see what we have here. So we see all our images here, all nicely merged, but they're of different sizes. So what we're gonna need to do is resize these images so they're like nice and rectangular. I already happen to know what the sizes is to get that nice rectangular look on each of the posters. So I'm just pretty much gonna go for that. To get a nice one on this, based on how I cut it out, I have a width of 1920. I'm gonna change the height here to 2845. Gonna do the same on the Amy. I got a width of 1919 and 2845. And last but not least, X Machina. 1920 and then 2845. Now that all of these have been resized, I can go ahead and adjust the transform positions. So I'm going to add a transform node on each of them. So let's do that for the X Machina. You can see it's in the way of everything. So I'm going to reduce this maybe about 0.2. There, about, there we go. Gonna do this for the Amy as well. Let's fit. Gonna change this to 0.2. Perfect. And for the room as well, change the size 0.2. Perfect. Okay, let's see what we have here. All right. So I'm just gonna adjust the positions. I'm going to move the room here to the left. Uh, I'm going to move X Machina down here. Perfect. All right. You can see we're getting everything slowly arranged and slowly put together. Increase the room just a tad bit. Just so it matches. Um, okay. One thing I like to do is that I like to leave my background as just pretty much plain. That way, if I wanted, I can basically like move all the elements. So we take a look here and I can just Let's make this visible. There we go. And I can just move all the elements freely without having the black background move. So for example, if this was like full on on black you can see that um, the background as well is getting moved with the image which is not what I want so I like to put the black background separate so in order to do that I just make this background plain as sort of a way to put all the images on the same um, aspect ratio if you will so I can just put copy that paste it and then merge a background node here. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and I'll make this background node. So right now, if I make it fully visible, it's going to be. And I'm going to put this so you can see it's going to be on top. So I click the merge and I can just do like a control T on Windows. And essentially it swaps the input. So the yellow here is the background and the green here is the foreground. Awesome. Now that we have each poster showing on the screen, the first thing we're gonna do is to animate the first poster. So if we just head over to the first keyframe, to the first frame on the transform node, we can basically go like, put a keyframe there and we can 
head over to frame 20. I'm just going to type frame 20. I'll put another keyframe there. And in the first keyframe, we're going to move it a tad bit to the left. And I'm changing my in and out points. Uh, and, and you can do that basically by hitting control click. So I'm going to put a point here and I'm going to change this right on 20. This is good. 25. So we can see our animation play. Just go like that. So it's pretty jaggedy, you know, we can try to smooth that animation out a little bit. So we're going to open our spline. Select the transform node. Give that a clickety click. What we, what we want in this graph is we want it to start fast and then slowly just ease in. So what I can do is I can do a control A, I can right click and select my ease and let's go out cubic. Let's see how that looks. All right, so I wanted to start out a little bit faster. So I'm gonna make this slightly bigger make this slightly more sharp here there we are perfect it's looking slightly better we can work with that here comes the fun part now that we have the first poster animated instead of manually animating amy poster and ex machina poster we're going to make use of expressions to automatically animate those two if you're not familiar with expressions, DaVinci Resolve's expressions are written in a programming language called Lua. And one of the things that we can do with expressions is to get the attribute of another node. So I'm going to rename our node so they're more clear. I'm going to rename this to transform first poster, transform second poster, third poster. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an expression to Amy. An expression goes like this. Um, in Lua, you can basically access an attribute from another node by going transform first poster. You can get the value. And what value do we want to get? We want to get the center value. And once we do that, we see that we have the center value. And if I play it, Amy just stands still. The Amy poster stands still. But I can get the value at a particular time frame. And DaVinci Resolve Fusion has this variable called time that gives us the current frame at the moment. So we can get the value of center at the current frame. And in order to do that, you just do comma time. And what you notice is that Amy moves exactly the same way as the room poster moves. Now, we definitely don't want both of them overlapping like that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just pause the animation for a quick second. What we're going to do is we're going to head over to our merge node. And so we're just going to move it ever so slightly. So if you click the merge node, if you go to the center attribute, you just give the X variable a slight, slight move there. You know what? I'm going to change the background just a tad bit so I can get a sense of what the back looks like. Perfect. I can get a nice spacing between them. Okay. So I'm just going to move this a tad bit to try and create some nice spacing between them. Perfect. And now if we take a look, we can see that they move exactly similar, exactly the same, but we wanted to go even further with this. We want Amy to the Amy poster to move slightly later, slightly later. So a sort of lag. In order to do this, we just simply go back 
to Amy's transform position. Give that a pause. We go back to that expression. So this will get me the center position at this current frame. But we can basically do some math and say negative five, for example. So five frames before the current frame. And let's see what that gets us. Ooh, and we get that slight, that slight lag. So we can even make it smaller. Let's say three frames for the current frames. There we go. You can see it's closer to what we want. You can see we get that nudging effect. So if we try two. You can literally adjust that number to whatever you like. I think three is good for this. And we can make the third poster pretty much just join join them the same way. So in order to do it for the third for the X Machina poster, we can just right click on this expression and we can do the exact same thing. But because we want the ex machina to lag behind the amy poster uh what we can do is do a transform second position second poster we're gonna get the value we're gonna get the center value of that poster um time minus three right and it goes there and the reason why it goes there is because of where it's merged right um they are all starting from that position but the only difference why the amy poster is there is because we've moved the merge so we can go to the center and then just move it move it slightly more like a lot as you can see here this you can see like the the uh spacing between them is uneven and what i can simply do so for example i see here that like the spacing here here is slightly more than the spacing here so what i can do because i work with nodes and then trying to tweak what i've done so far i can just basically add like a transform here And just move all of them slightly. And there you have it. Now, in order to make it look a little bit nice and fancy, you can throw in a little bit of gradient at the back. So if we just go to the background and we hit gradient. This all the way actually let's make this a radial gradient and we can move this all the way to the center or close enough there we are perfect and then we can change the color that nice nice glow there we are perfect all right, that is your nudge animation. And there you have it, guys. That is the nudge animation. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, be sure to check out the other videos. Let me guys know what you think. If you have any questions about how this animation was made, something that I glossed over, why I wasn't too detailed about, feel free to ask down in the comments and I'll get right on it. 
Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.